The Attorney General talking about naming a special counsel to investigate in two of the investigations into Donald Trump. And we've just learned that it is Jack Smith, who has a very impressive uh, biography, everything from uh, a prosecutor here in the States to covering war crimes, to investigating war crimes at The Hague. Yeah, starting uh, his uh, public service uh, almost 30 years ago, working in the federal government in both Democratic or under-Democratic and Republican administrations. Of course, we'll learn more about Jack Smith in the uh, coming hours. Let's Let's go back now to our panel. We have Evan, we have Jessica Schneider, and Ellie Honig. Ellie, your thoughts? So when we talk about the career non-political prosecutor, Jack Smith appears to be the very model of that notion. He has worked, as you said, for decades as a state and federal prosecutor and as a war crimes prosecutor. There's no obvious, no apparent on the face of it, political leaning one way or another. This is really what the Justice Department typically, the vast majority of federal prosecutors in the Justice Department are. They are not political actors. They are not political appointees. They're people who just come in and do the job and do the work. And Jack Smith, by all appearances, has done that for many, many years now. So now he is going to have have the first say. He is going to have to get up to speed on this investigation. It's going to take him some time, but it is a well-developed investigation. He's not starting from square one. And he will ultimately have at least the initial call on do we indict or do we not. Now, he will have some level of independence, significant independence from Merrick Garland, from the attorney general, really from everybody else at the Justice Department. But ultimately, Merrick Garland will retain that power to agree or disagree. And if he disagrees, to override whatever recommendation Mr. Smith offers up. Hmm. Elliot Williams, a CNN legal analyst, is joining us uh, as well. Um, the attorney general said that the extraordinary circumstances demanded this, and he said that uh, he identified as the catalyst for this decision the announcement or the declaration of former President Trump as a 2024 candidate and the inclination from the current president to run for re-election. Uh, your reaction to what we just heard from A.G. Garland? Right. There, you know, Victor, there really isn't a roadmap for a circumstance like this because of how remarkable the circumstances are. And this is that, as the attorney general laid out, you have a, a former president uh, being investigated by the Justice Department. If to do this by the book, to, ki to, pr to conduct these investigations in a way that sort of the textbooks would say to do it, then yes, the attorney general had to appoint a special counsel here because what you have to do is take out even the appearance of impropriety. Now, look, we all know that in, you know, I was born yesterday, and within hours, the record of Jack Smith is going to be picked apart, and he will probably be seen uh, by some or criticized by some as being a partisan political hack or tool. We saw this play out with Robert Mueller uh, several years ago. But the simple fact is removing it from the chain of command to some extent, as Elliot said, uh, from the Justice Department was very valuable. Look, one more point that I'd make here as an interesting bit of stagecraft, the one person who was not there on that stage was Jack Smith. And that was to give at least the sense of clarity that this is a separate in individual from outside the Justice Department who is coming to take this matter over. And it's almost the best of all worlds, at least from the Justice Department's perspective, because number one, uh, as has been said, he gets all of the staff that have been working on this for quite some time. And number two, a future president cannot really fire a special counsel, except there's some extraordinary reason to do so. Like he sh literally shows up to work drunk or something like that. The, um, the attorney general just doesn't have the same latitude that he would with a senior political appointee. So yes, um, I, you know, I know there are people who, who might criticize this decision, but it, but it sort of had to be done regardless of uh, what, what the president's actions were uh, previously. Um, Evan, you were reminding us that in terms of the histories of special counsels, that actually the Robert Mueller investigation was wrapped up more quickly than many others, including the John Durham one, which is ongoing and has been, I mean, for, you know, roughly, well, two years now. More um, than and three years. More than three years. <laughs> is that right? So it's been going yeah. on for more than three years. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. And so any way to know i mean since some of this work um as ellie was just pointing out has already been done and the department of justice has been working on it any idea about what the timeline would look like no and i think one reason you, you guys uh just uh before the attorney general walked out uh, reported on on uh, some of the uh, some of the reporting from from uh caitlin collins who heard from inside the trump camp that this is something they were dreading and i uh, look i think part of the reason why is because 
of the nature of special counsels. There, there's a lot inside this building. The idea of special counsels are not very, it's not very popular, simply because, you know, you're out of the control of the attorney general, the deputy attorney general, the direct daily control, and they have a way of just taking a life of, the, uh, of their own, right? And there is no easy way to shut it down once you get started. And so what you're pointing out, Allison, you, you raised it very early on, uh, is exactly right. That is the nature of them, and that is the problematic thing. I, real, real quick, I want to just uh, go back to something Elliot just mentioned. Uh, I'll just say real quick that the, um, the reason why Jack Smith was uh, not in the room today is actually he, he had an injury, apparently uh, fell uh, uh, during a, a bike accident, and uh, had some recent uh, surgery or, or some kind of uh, uh, medical attention, which means that he could not be present today uh, at this announcement. But we expect, and, and you know, he's already now uh, the special counsel as of this moment. So he is now going to be running this investigation. And back to the point that you were making, look, it, it does have a way of, of, of taking on a life of its own. Uh, they, they have kind of really unlimited budget. And that's part of the problem with them and why I think there was some hesitation upstairs uh, about naming a special counsel. The other part of this is that, you know, they scoured. They, they spent weeks trying to think of a former judge, uh, a former uh, DOJ official, somebody who could pass the test. And they finally landed on a war crimes prosecutor, somebody who I'm told is a political independent, uh, somebody who's going to pass that smell test that I'm sure Trump and, and Republican partisans are going to be doing right at this moment, trying to figure out whether there's anything in his past that might indicate that he is a partisan or that could, you know, obviously uh, give them reason to have pause about how this investigation is going to be conducted, Victor and Allison. Well, Evan, I'm sure it wasn't just finding someone who could take the job, but someone who would, considering yes, all that is likely that. coming uh, for them uh, now that they're going to head up this investigation. Jessica Schneider, let me come to you on uh, what we heard from the attorney general. He says he's confident that the appointment will not slow down the investigations. We've heard uh, Allison discuss that with Evan. Uh, but what's the ramp up time? He's coming into this. There is a team already established. He's got to, as we say in news, read in. To, uh, to get to a point where he can lead this investigation. Yeah, two very wide-ranging investigations that have been ongoing for quite some time. The Mar-a-Lago one, not as quite as long as the investigation into January 6th here. But despite those two wide-ranging investigations, the new special counsel, Jack Smith, he's actually been given fairly specific instructions, as, at least as it pertains to January 6th. You know, the attorney general mentioned it at least twice um, when he came out to talk to reporters. You know, he said that he'll be looking into the potential interference into the transfer of power, the certification of the vote in 2020. So that January 6th investigation that's been ongoing now for almost two years, it has many different facets. Uh, the rioters, all of those rioters who have been arrested, charged, we're now seeing the Oath Keepers trial. That will continue to progress under the purview of the U.S. attorney here in D.C. But it's this very specific question about interference um, into the transfer of power, the certification. In particular, our team, led by Evan Perez, has reported that it goes to the heart of these uh, this fake elector scheme, where these uh, Trump uh, supporters were fake electors. They wanted to try to disrupt the elect electoral count here. So that's the primary focus of that facet of the investigation. But then the Mar-a-Lago documents investigation, we saw that peak with the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago back in August. But that has um, been ongoing for several months as well. So you're right. It will take time for this new special counsel to get up to speed here. And the big question is, how quickly will he act? Will this be a wide-ranging investigation or a long investigation, as we've seen with John Dur Durham? Uh, especially complicating things, the fact that the former president will be running for president again at the same time this investigation is ongoing from the special counsel. So a lot of, uh, a lot of outstanding questions here.